file the June 27, 2011 regular meeting of the Franklin Board of Commissions to order. I'd like to request that everyone to please stand for the invocation by the Reverend Jerry Perrett, retired Assembly of God Church. And uh, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. Reverend Perrett. I commend you for starting on time. Uh, <laughs> recent, well, last year when I prayed at the Senate, the Senate is notorious for always starting late anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes. And after I'd sat there for an hour and waited for them to come in, they finally marched in. And my opening comment was that the starting time for the Senate is much like the rapture of the church. Nobody knows when it's going to happen, but you just have to be ready when it does. <laughs> and so I appreciate you starting on time. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for your love, mercy, and grace. Thank you for your kindness to us. You give constantly and help us to appreciate more the many blessings we have bestowed. We pray for wisdom to be granted around uh, these tables this afternoon. May your presence become real and may we look to you for guidance. You said if you lack wisdom, ask for it and you would receive and then believe that you're going to receive that. So we're asking for your guidance and your direction. Help us to make decisions that are for the people, for the good, and, and for the outreach of this community. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Reverend Pratt, we thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Wilder. Here. Mr. Hedden. Here. Mr. Turner. Here. Mr. May. Yes. May Graham. Yes. All present counted for. Okay, but now the next item on the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes. So we've had a chance to review the minutes for the May 23rd regular meeting, June 6th work session, and the June 13th work session. Uh, do I have a motion pertaining to the uh, the minutes? Here, I'll move to dispense with the reading of the minutes and approve them as adopted. Do we have a second? Second. In discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Wilder? Yes. Mr. Hedden? Yes. Mr. Turner? Yes. Mr. May? Yes. Mayor Graham? Uh, yes. So the minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is ceremonial items, and we do not have any ceremonial items. Correct. Correct? Okay. The next item is citizens' comments. <coughs> uh, at this particular portion of uh, the agenda, citizens can come forth and speak to the commission. We request that the comments be held to no longer than five minutes. So if you can make your positions, come to the microphone, state your name, and then make your comments. My name is Lucy Stevens. I live at 200 Thistlewood Avenue across from Juniper Hill Golf Course behind Allison's Dry Cleaner in Thistleton Terrace Condominiums. I live next door to Anthony Todd Choir, mentioned in a June 10, 2011 State Journal article about a Vision Event Center in Brighton Park Shopping Center. <clears throat> Noise from his apartment is a problem so much so that I have to sleep on a camp cot in the hallway. I come here tonight to report that fact and also to report that Todd's words and actions don't match. In the news article, City Planning Director Gary Muller said he brought the amended development plan for Brighton Park Shopping Center to add a reception assembly hall at Suite 114 the former movie theater space before the commission because the reception hall will be within 500 feet 
of a single family residence and a new type of use is being proposed for the building. Kyle's response is, noise would not be a problem. How on earth he made such a statement June 9th, three days after sending me to the hallway to sleep, is beyond me. The audio noise from his apartment next door is a problem, and yet he states, noise won't be a problem for the nearby single family residence to the Brighton Park Vision Event Center. I wouldn't take his word for it because his words and actions don't match at all. He also made <clears throat> intimidating st statements to me when, as a tenant, I complained about his apartment noise. He said, you don't own your unit, do you? And two, I'm going to call your landlord and talk to him about you. He stated my landlord's name. Who's to say he wouldn't intimidate those in the nearby single family residence of the Vision Event Center should they complain of noise? Todd's latest plan here at Thistleton Terrace was also unveiled <coughs> at an association meeting 616, 66 rather, held here in Frankfurt at the Fellowship of Acts Church on East Main Street. He introduced Bishop Gardner Yates, the new owner of buildings one and four at Thistleton Terrace. Bishop Yates said, one, he's going to open an emergency shelter program for troubled youth, 18 to 21 years old, and house them in buildings one and four. He's going to build fences around each of the buildings. He's going to have a staff person located in each of the buildings. He's going to turn the grounds into recreation areas. He's not going to pay monthly condominium fees on any of the 24 units because he's going to make repairs to the property. The association will be billed for, the, for and expected to pay for the repairs. Finally, if the owners don't agree with his plans, he'll take them to court and have all legal documents terminated with this that terminated that governed Thistleton. Needless to say, his presentation was not well received. This is the end of the talk. Speaking of bishops and churches, and he, I even appealed to Todd about the apartment noise in the powerful name of Jesus. My thinking was that since we're both Christians, maybe he would reconsider. That didn't work either, a copy of the notice attached. To conclude, one of the conditions that Director Muller made for recommending approval of the amended plan was a certificate of occupancy be obtained. I filed a complaint 927-2010 and stated that I didn't believe that certificates of occupancy were legally adhered to regarding buildings one and four. Surely the bishop will be held accountable to abide by the law and have certificates of occupancy for each of the 24 units. If Todd's efforts here fail, he may want to consider an acting career. He's a heck of an actor, well-mannered, <laughs> lots of self-control, and great eye contact. But in the end, his words and actions don't match. Incidentally, the hallway I sleep in is 36 inches wide, and the cot I sleep on is 34 inches wide. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is the any comment from commissioner? I'm sorry you're having to sleep in your hallway. Thank you. Do you think we'll Is Gary here? Yes. Mr. Mueller, would you uh, maybe give some kind of response? Um, the conditional use permit at Brighton Park did go to the Planning Commission. It was approved with conditions. Um, it is not lawful to open until he has a business license. He can't get his business license until he gets a state building permit and city building permit and then a certificate of occupancy. Uh, they limited the hours of operation at that site, the old theater at Brighton Park. Um, so all that is coming, forthcoming, in, in accordance to the code and the Planning Commission conditions. As far as uh, Mr. Yates, um, staff heard some of that uh, comments that were as a, an anticipated forthcoming business there, and code enforcement has uh, contacted them. It requires a conditional use permit. It's not lawful to have a uh, 
rest home, uh, caretaker residence, or a shelter without a conditional use permit for that zoning district. <coughs> And so he'll have to go to the board to get approval for that before he can use it as such. Uh, we also were told that he's made some interior renovations combining some of the units. And we informed him that that requires a building permit as well. Uh, but that was about two weeks ago when that was all came through our office as a phone call complaint. I uh, don't remember who actually called it, but we were, uh, we were made apprised of it then. So they'll have to go to a conditional use permit before they can have any type of a shelter. Uh, Mr. Yates did have one on 1401 Louisville Road. It was the house up at the top. It's the last house uh, within the city limits before you get to the credit union. I think there's actually two houses in the county and then get to the Commonwealth Credit Union. Um, he had approval for there as a conditional use permit, but they have since uh, shut those doors. Um, but that's all I know of uh, at this time. And, and <coughs> Happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Any, you know, we to make comments. Would, would, would either you or Commissioner Head in mind uh, getting a copy of that for a moment so that mm -hmm. we yes. can all see this documentation yeah. so, so we can all get a deeper understanding? It's just extensive to copy seven of them. Mm -hmm. So is that what you're saying is that you want a copy of the Oh, copy? yeah, just mm -hmm. that I'd like to see to see the document so I can get a deeper understanding I of what's, like for what's going on. I would like for everyone to have a copy, but I, I didn't want to spend mm -hmm. the money. Understood. Okay. Right. Well, thank you very much. That's why I gave one to the mayor. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Any other citizen want to come forth and make comments? Please uh, you know, state your name and, sure. and make your comments, and hopefully within the five minutes. Appreciate thank the you. commission's time this afternoon. My name is Mike Lawrence. I live on Beechwood Avenue in Crestwood Subdivision. I'm basically here today to uh, be with my neighbor, Mr. Luther Clark who has been experiencing major sewage problems along Beachwood Avenue. Uh, I've lived in, on that street for about six years now, and I've been a witness to the sewage problems myself for that six-year period of time. Uh, anytime that we have large rains, uh, the sewage basically comes out of the manholes that are on the street. Of course, in the lower part of the street is where the water collects and the sewage and toilet paper is quite visible any time that uh, the water gets high. A month or so ago, we had this fairly large rain, this tremendous rain, and I had never seen the water as high as it was at that time myself. I think Mr. Clark has seen it a number of times that way. Uh, Mr. Clark has a, a barrier that he's got up over his driveway to try to prevent the water from running into his driveway down into his basement. There's a catch basin that's right outside his driveway, right in front of it. And that catch basin is not large enough, in my estimation, for that water to run off along with the sewage. It's all connected together there. Uh, I think from my understanding is that at some point in time in the distant past, there was discussion of putting a large storm drain into that area. For one reason or the other, it didn't get done. Uh, uh, looking at the piping that's there now, from what I understand, it's really just an eight-inch pipe, I think, that runs into the other sewage in the back of the houses on his side of the road. So every time that that water comes and it gets large, then it rolls over his driveway, it runs into his basement and out the other side. Anyone that was around and a number of the neighbors were out there could attest to the amount of water that was running into his basement. Uh, the water was a waterfall coming out the other side of his house. Uh, uh, what was happening is, is that water was so great, to my understanding, that it was pushing back on his sewer line, which connects to that sewer line that was trying to handle all that water along with the sewage and it actually came up through his commode in his basement and flooded his lower basement. It's flooded his lower basement numbers of time. I think this may have been one of the worst. Uh, he was shoveling feces and cleaning that area for a good month afterwards. Uh, Mr. Clark is a World War II veteran. He is an individual that uh, I have a great deal of respect for them. And uh, what we're trying to do is to get some help from the city with regard to getting that fixed. Uh, 
I understand that the city is under a consent decree to do so. I also understand that maybe some planning is in the operation for next year to do something out on Beachwood Avenue. I can only tell you firsthand that it's pretty bad when you have a large rain and toilet papers coming up through the manholes and running down the middle of the street in a subdivision with 300 houses. So I'm here today basically to uh, see what we can do to get your all's help to see if we can't get that problem fixed. It clearly needs to be fixed. Okay. I don't know if Mr. Clark wants to say a word or two or not, but that's what I want to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is hard. Well, as I've been labeled over the last week, two weeks, months, as an old man. I'm 40, 89 years old. The Lord lets me live the next January, I'll be 90. World War II, got a purple heart, full brown star. I'm not asking any favors from anybody. But this condition in Crestwood is pathetic. This is not something that's just happened. That over the past 20 or 30 years, when Ms. Duvall was a commissioner, she resigned because of this. And I've got uh, letters that I wrote to the State Journal that they wouldn't publish. I sent them to Lexington and the Lexington Herald would publish them. But I didn't bring any of that stuff with me. But anyhow, that's the most contaminated unsanitary spot in Franklin County, Crestwood Subdivision. That's one of the ways you can label it. And it's because of the lack of earth interest and the work and planning to drain that area. And it gets progressively worse every year. They let me get these storms. That's generally in May, June. And uh, we uh, Uh, anything that we can do, we will we'll do. And uh, I know of, of, of one problem, especially my house, that has solved the problem. But uh, you can't get anybody from the sewer department to come out there and look at it. This last storm uh, we had, I called the sewer department, Public Works. They said, well, we're so loaded up, we can't get out there. And I said, well, I thought I'd just call the police department. I called down the police department and got the dispatcher over there with a lady and I told her that uh, I wish somebody would come out and take some pictures or make some records of what was happening in Crestwood. She said, we don't care. Because that's not police work. We don't care. And it didn't come. So that time we missed out on that. And the last man that from the sewer department that was out there was uh, Mr. Rambo. I don't know whether he's in here or not. He like, excuse me, I can't hear too well. I might just keep I, I understand. <laughs> I've got a sick problem. But, uh, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, but in Mr. a few minutes, Rambo, we'll, we'll discuss this in a few minutes. Yes, go Mr. Rambo came out after waiting two or three weeks to get him out there. And, of course, our street is about eight feet higher than Presswood. Crestwood is the lowest one. And he was telling me that the water flow on Crestwood was backing up on Beachwood. Now water don't run up here. Everybody knows that. Well, anyway, he went there for just a few minutes. And then the other thing that's happened, oh, about seven years ago, one of the city engineers, I forgot what his name was, but uh, he came out and the old lady next door to me, we had a continual ditch, went behind my house, but everything off of, off of the streets in Crestwood goes in a catch basin out of my front gate, down through my yard, and on, traveled on through a ditch that used to be there, to on down to Crestwood. Well, the city engineer let the lady next door fill that ditch in. Then he went in, Mr. Rambo was out there, he said, what size pipe did she put in the ditch? 
She didn't put any pipe in there. Just took dirt and filled it in, leveled her yard up, and everything that goes down in my driveway and the sewer, I mean the drain there, uh, goes down in her yard and backs up in my yard. And this time it was worse. And I got everything out of that yard. Everything that comes down the street, they use the streets for uh, draining the subdivision. And you get everything in the world off that street. Cigarette butts to Lord knows them, what else. But anyway, uh, I'm just pretty well upset about it. This has been going on for 20 years, and uh, nobody's done anything about it. And we've been paying a sewer bill. Now, we don't have but one sewer out there, and that's a sanitary sewer. Eight-inch sanitary sewer. There's no combination sewers and yeah. few catch basins that do nothing. On mm -hmm. Hillwood, we've got a catch basin on this side of the street. It's got a pipe goes under the street to a catch basin on this side, right straight across from it. One drains the other. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, Luther, I mean, Mr. Clark, uh, I hate to... I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> I, said, I, I said, Luther, Mr. Clark, I, uh, I hate to interrupt you, uh, but I, there was some sort of a time limit. You know, we're supposed to have like five minutes to make a presentation, and, uh, and I'm not trying to be rude to you. You know, you're my buddy. I'm not trying to be, I'm not going to be rude to you, but we, we do understand what you, I think we understand what you. That's what is still out there. Yeah. And it's in the shape that I'm telling you, it's the most sanit unsanitary spot in Franklin yeah, yeah. County. Come on, they got it. Yeah. All right, that's all. Right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Lucian. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yes. You want to speak? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. Uh, Commissioner May. I was going to say, I can address that because this came up uh, a few times while I was mayor. And thank you all for coming down to, to give us an update. We did have funding in the city budget, and we met with the Crestwood Neighborhood Association on several occasions. Uh, I can't remember who I was there. I don't know there was signing sheets. There was a lot of people uh, because Mr. Brim was the chairman at the time. And I don't know if you remember, Mr. Clark, if you if you came, but I know I've talked to you out there before, so I know exactly what you're talking about. But we had money in the budget to fix this, the drainage problems, but we had three residents that would not give city easements to come through the property line. And so the crest we left it up to the Crestwood neighbor Neighborhood Association said, if you want us to, we can condemn uh, public domain. We can, we can condemn those uh, easements and put the lines there. But well, there was one property that was going to go under a driveway, and it would prevent that property owner from putting in a, a garage or anything in the future. They couldn't use it. So the Crestwood Neighborhood Association said at the time, they really didn't want to force their neighbors to, to allow that easement. So there was money. Uh, let me ask the as public works said, Jeff Hackbar, do you remember the, were you here when that took place? Do you remember? I don't want to put you on the spot. But I very much have seen firsthand Mr. Clark and others. I've been out there and, and seen it. We, and we have had pictures in the past. I know the last rain, I don't know if any of our folks got pictures or not. But they, were out, they came out, the, the sewage people did. And we could talk. We talked to three hours. Oh, you, you can't. You can't. Know what's going on? Cause you go out there and look. Right, and that's what I'm saying. I've been out there on numerous occasions and and stood okay. stood down and watched the water water pool up. But um, when we did the big comprehensive drainage projects for the city in uh, 1998, 99, and that in that period, we included um, a lot of neighborhoods, the West Side and Home Street, and then uh, Crestwood was also one of the areas with some places in Indian Hills. But do you, do you have records that show how much we had budget? I think it was around $50,000. Does that sound right to you? But that would have been, in those years, dollars. It would be more than that now, of course. It was higher. You remember? Well, I believe it's... I'm sorry. I meant to ask the mayor. Is it okay if I asked the... Well, certainly. I'm sorry, Mayor. I apologize. <coughs> I didn't... Is, do you remember what the amount was? Back, this was probably middle 90s, is what I remember when I first came here. There was around eight hundred thousand dollars budgeted for this project at that time. Um, since that time, the easements were not able to be signed, and, and so the project kind of was put on hold. And since that time, I guess there's not money today in the budget for a project. But 
Um, just for an update, we did receive a signed easement for the downstream property, only one of the ones we could not get back 15 years ago. So that might be a breakthrough as far as getting access to get establishing an outlet for the water for the neighborhood. So uh, Tom Bradley, our senior engineer, and uh, the city solicitor worked getting an easement. So that's kind of some new news that's come out, come since this spring rain event. Could I add another word? Just, is that possible? Yeah. Uh, Mayor, he's asking if you could say something else. Pardon me? He's asking. Could I have another word? Uh, well, uh, yeah, please come forth. You don't sit back there. Yeah. Uh, well, I, well, I understand that uh, about easements and, and people that don't want to provide them and those kinds of things. You all are under a consent decree to not let sewage run in the city streets, and it is. And to me, I don't know whether the easement matters anymore. And there are federal agencies and other state agencies that'd be very concerned about sewage be. running in the streets. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And when toilet paper is coming up, up through manholes because of stormwater drainage, pushing that sewage down through it and running into an eight-inch pipe, that's just not that's just not sufficient. Okay, yeah, I, I'll, 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 I was just gonna say, to him, all I was saying was that we had the problem solved 15 years ago, but the neighborhood had not wanted us to move forward. We still, those of us that were here since then, believe me, uh, I've talked about this two meetings ago, that the drainage thing is still at the top of my list. And, I, and I, understand about, sewage. I understand about the neighborhood association and and I'm, I have never participated with that outfit, but I have nothing against them. I don't even know, you know what their meetings are or anything else. However, I would say that some of these people, as they say, don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to have any uh, digging, anything that changes the circumstances that exist, but they're not the ones that are dealing with the problem. And when you have people like Mr. Clark, who's ruining their home, maybe their health, he and his wife have lived there, both of them elderly. Uh, and there's other people there too, the person across the street from him, basement <laughs> flooded this last time as well, and I think he had sewage problems as well. Something has to be done. And it's really not a matter of easements anymore, in my estimation. Uh, uh, Mr. Scaff, would you, have you have some knowledge on this? Maybe you could help us. <laughs> there are, um, from a sanitary standpoint, there's several things going on that, that will impact the Crestwood neighborhood. Uh, all of you are aware of the East Frankfurt pump station. Uh, part of that project is to replace a portion of the line that is at the downhill side of Crestwood between uh, Crestwood and the uh, and Versailles Road. Uh, that's an old clay line, uh, very seriously deteriorated, has a lot of root blockage. And so as part of that project, since we've got this new station coming on, uh, we've re we are in the process. Uh, we have obviously a contractor under contract uh, that is replacing that line.